with that. And the last two pages in your handout are the accelerated guides. So for one and for two. Um, and I, actually, we can kind of go over that. I'll, I'll um, show you just to make sense of this particular table. Um, this is a guide. So um, it's giving you kind of a general idea of how to get through the course material um, and how long it should take your student to do that. Um, that first column are units that the district um, kind of coordinated. Um, and that was prior to their textbook adoption. So those were unit um, groupings that as a district they had decided, okay, this is how we want to teach the math, and this is how we want to um, organize those concepts. So that kind of first column really doesn't apply to us too much, except if you want to know what, what, um, what the course content is then those would be the official names for that. The second column, um, th that's kind of a general guide of how long it should take to get through those courses, um, how long it should take to get through that material. Um, third, this is where it does become, um, where it does apply to us. Those are the units that you'll find in your ebook. And then the fourth column, um, the module is that first number, and then the modules are broken up into lessons. Some of them are in three-part lessons, some of them four, and some of them five. And so uh, those last two columns, the third and fourth, is where it applies to your ebook. So those numbers actually mean a whole lot more than the other numbers. So this will all start to make a little bit more sense as we navigate uh, into the ebook. So, I'm going to kind of go step by step, so some of this may be redundant, um, but if you'll just bear with me, we'll all, this way we'll all be on the same page. So um, on the first page of your handout, at the very top, the website that you'll always log into is myhr.com, and um, this is what that website looks like when you type it into your computer. You'll go into username, and um, a friend of mine, Vicki Lowe, she taught me this, and this has been such a huge help to me. Anytime you find information that you need to have ready, available to you, like your password and your username, um, if you can take a screenshot of it with your phone or take an actual picture, then it will always be in your phone so you can always access it and it'll be ready. You know, I mean, if you're out and about and that kind of thing. Some of you may be way more organized than me and have a better system, but that's kind of my system. So um, I have it in my phone. <clears throat> I also, at home, it's already bookmarked, so I don't have to enter it again, if that makes sense. So I'm going to log in with my username. And here's your dashboard. This is what the dashboard should look like. So this is kind of um, the best reproduction of that screen page is your second page on your handout. Right here under resources, this shows you everything that is available to you. Um, this is what the district has made available to us. We have an interactive teacher edition. That's that first orange button. Looks like red up there. The second one, um, is your teacher resources. Okay, These are, if you want black line masters, you want to be able to make a quiz for your child, some type of assessment, um, this would be the button that you could click on and access those resources. The yellow buttons are important. This, these are the resources your students will see on their dashboard. They will only see the yellow. They won't see any other color of your resources. So they have access to their interactive student edition as well as their student resources. Those are very similar to your interactive teacher edition, except they don't have notes like your edition, the teacher edition does. The teacher resources differs from the student resources because that has answers, you know, um, so versus the student resources. Professional development videos, these are videos that you can watch. Um, if there's a concept, yes. So I'm logged on as, as a student, but yes. I don't see the two yellow things up there. I, um, I see my subscriptions. My Are you able to see it? Does it can? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you see the same I see thing? what she sees, yeah. But I with my log on. Okay. Um, the only I thing I can tell you is possibly the resources. I don't think I created his account this year. Yeah, I think it, yeah. 
I'll take care of that. Yeah, oh, we'll okay. take it because it's just one person. Yeah. So it's, it's not everybody. So since they're all able to log in, we're good. Okay. We'll get you going. Um, so I'm the dashboard kind of is a, a little overwhelming the first time you yeah, see it, but just, I'm just going to show you um, key we'll landmarks that you need to be aware of. Okay. This first drop down menu, and if you click on it, um, gives you access to all the materials that you have access to as a teacher. Math 1, um, if you are teaching Math 1, then this drop down menu should show Math 1 and Math 2 because later on in the semester you'll move into the Math 2 curriculum. Um, if you are teaching um, Math 2 advanced, you should have access to back Book 2 and Book 3. If you're doing 3, then the second semester or the second half of that semester, there will be, I'm not sure what that looks like because it goes beyond book three. Um, so Mr. Shabazz will be able to kind of. Precalculus. Um, Precalculus. So, um, so that's kind of the next math book that you'll work on. So this drop down menu is important. That drop down menu is also available for your students. So your students should have access to those textbooks also. Okay? So when you get home, that's something I would check with uh, not only your login, you can check yours right now, but if you know your students' login, you make sure that they have access to those textbooks. Because if they don't, then the school needs to give them access. Or actually, you as a parent need to give them access to those books, and I can kind of show you how to do that, okay? So, uh, the next page kind of just goes over that drop-down menu. If you turn to the next page in your handout, another drop-down menu that um, that's important is in settings. When you click on settings, you have the option of managing your classes and managing your accounts. This is where you would go in and create a login for your students. So, when you click on manage classes, it will take you to a different web page. And this is where you can actually create a class. Um, you can create your student roster. <coughs> what I've done um, over here, under classes and students, you can click on view a class roster. And I'll just show you what's on my account. <coughs> When I click on the drop down menu, this is where I discovered, because I, yesterday I was here on campus and there was a parent asking me, well, can't students access their um, math accounts using Schoology? And I'm like, no, you have to, you know, the, the instructor has to create uh, uh, the students and the roster and all of that. But um, when I click on, see, the class I created was my daughter's name. That's that second one. But when you click on this one, and those are the accounts that we created for you at the site. So that's what we, when we re reset your class each year, that's what we created for you. Okay. So, so then on that aspect, that's uh -huh. what we provided on our end. Okay. Yeah, so that's okay. where it may look different. So if you choose to use that, then that's okay. If you choose to make your own account, I don't know what really the difference would be other than maybe, okay. you, maybe you're adding a second class. So this is kind of, I mean, with mine, I did, not knowing that the school had offered that for, for us, um, I did kind of manually go in. So this is kind of where you get to play around a little bit and see, okay, what, what, um, what's available and what does this give our kids access to. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard. So any questions so far? I know I'm kind of going through this fast. So any questions? Um, I don't know what page we're on in the roster, but I'll just start in the handouts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to log in as my daughter so that you can see um, what your kids have access to. So I'll log out. One of the things that I did for um, Marie, she has a spiral notebook that she uses to take notes. On the inside cover of that spiral notebook, I, um, I'm kind of, I, I really like those tape labelers, you know, where you type it in and it makes a label. So I use that to write her username and also her password. So she always had access to that if for whatever reason 
her Chromebook wasn't remembering what her login information is. But once they do it once, it should keep it as a password and encourage your students to make a bookmark of that so that they have ready access and can get into the Chromebooks right away. So. All right, this is um, Marie, and she, according to the account, she has access to all three textbooks. We'll just go to Math 2. Um, has everybody seen what the interactive student edition looks like? Maybe, I know your son, you, you homeschooled last year, right? Okay. So, um, so which, which, which page is that supposed to be on? Um, that's the first Is that at home or, or, or where is that? This is the dashboard right after your student logs in with their username and password, this dashboard should appear. Okay. And then their resources should be here. That's, that did not happen. That's, that's not on your, um, and this is the daughter that's in 11th grade. No, this is this one. <laughs> okay, that's why, because it's a different book. Ah, yeah. Oh, but but I should have gotten, a, the front page doesn't look like that. Not for sixth grade. Okay. No, sixth grade's a different, uh, there is right. a different configuration. So this is, we're talking high school, the high school math curriculum okay. should look like this. Are you able to log into your 11th graders? I, I was unable to today, but she okay. made me on it at home, so. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so this, when when she logs in at home, she should see book three, which looks like, I mean, it's not going to look any different. Um, it'll still be yellow, but um, okay. in the right-hand corner, it should say integrated math three in that drop-down menu. Okay. Okay, so kind of where my mouse is right there. Um, so we can go into the student edition. It opens up another window. Um, let's go into, let's see. I think the first unit that we do have <coughs> two is unit two. So we'll click on. This is where if you want to just look at um, the pacing guide or the year at a glance, I'll kind of show you how to navigate this. So since it says, um, if we're starting at the very beginning, uh, unit two is the first unit we'll go into. So if I click on unit two, it opens up the two modules that you'll find in unit two. I then click on module three, and then it shows me all the individual lessons. Module three is made up of four lessons. We're going to do lesson one. So with the interactive guide, it's slightly different than what they might see in the textbook because um, there's videos, there's opportunity for them to um, answer questions, do assessments. Um, the setup for each of the lessons is always the same. In the, um, sorry, let me clear this. This down here in the bottom um, right hand corner tells you what section of your lesson or what section of your lesson is coming up. So the first section is always engaged. <coughs> then the next section is explore concept number one. So um, when I scroll down with my mouse, this uh, when you click on this, this preview will, of sorry, it's really loud. Um, it'll if your student likes to be um, likes to hear the audio, it will read the text for them. If if that's something that they want to do, um, and it'll read all of this. And usually, the the engage aspect of it is to help them to kind of think about something that would apply, something real life that would apply to the concept that they're teaching in this particular lesson. Then in the bottom right hand corner, you can press that arrow. It'll take you to the next concept. So here's where you kind of, they'll be learning um, the concept mathematically. 
You can be. And so it'll read that. Click. And so that's kind of how they navigate. I'm right. just going to. Did you have to turn something on to get that to read it, read it for you? Or? Yes, it's that corner. Let me show you. Um, it's that triangle in the top left hand corner. That play button right there. It's this one that I'm pointing to here. Oh, oh okay. So that'll read um, the text to the student. The your, your turn, obviously, is when the student shows that they understand um, the concept by doing the problem that they're given. Um, check your answer. I believe they're given like three opportunities to try. Um, and if they're not able to answer it correctly, then they'll be given a different problem with that same concept and so they'll be able to try. Now you'll see that I can kind of just click without doing the problems, which um, your student may figure that out also, but there's a way to kind of check to make sure they really got the, um, the concept. So sorry if I'm giving yourself some, <laughs> some tricks. So you just kind of keep pressing, and then here's opportunity to um, answer another question. Um, this is something that is um, that is a common thread um, in terms of the Common Core curriculum is that they want you to be able to write your explanation. Um, and one of the ways that you can kind of do this at home um, if your student is struggling on how to articulate this verbally, um, you and the child can kind of have an ongoing conversation and record that ongoing conversation. Or you can even audio record it and say, okay, um, see, we, we were able to come up with this, now how would you put that in three or four sentences? And so there's ways to kind of, because sometimes when they see a blank, blank box and a cursor, it's like, dude, I don't even, well, this was right here, you know? So sometimes it might require some dialogue and that's kind of a way to um, draw out those answers and evaluate. So here's where um, here's where I kind of do things a little bit differently, but you as a home instructor can decide what would be the best uh, way for you to execute this. This is um, the assessment for the end of the lesson. Did they get the concept? So if you've got a child that keeps pressing that arrow and they haven't done any of the step-by-step -step exam problems and then they get to this, you'll know that maybe they didn't do those or they didn't get the concept because they can't do this piece. Um, what I found difficult with doing this on the computer is that there were some concepts like graphing where they were very specific in how they wanted the student to graph and they could tell by the way um, the student approached the problem that they either did it the way they wanted them to do it or didn't do it the way that they wanted them to do it. And so um, the graphing like for instance, do you guys at the, the point intercept where you can use the y intercept to graph versus using the standard form of an equation and using that to graph? There's two different ways to get the same answer. And they were specific in the way that they wanted the student to answer it. And they could tell by the way, because we graphed the line and it looked like this is the line and she kept getting it wrong and so I realized okay there's another way for me to look at this yes I would avoid us. graphs because if you're it's it, if you're over one pixel literally if you're just off by one pixel they will mark it incorrect so I just never assign graphs on the computer I do all graphs by hand and so it's up to you though I mean but it just it's really frustrating. It's that plus the pixel. If you just off slightly, it says you didn't intercept the axis of the correct spot. And because this is a computer program, they have to input the answer specifically. And if it's um, if it's not as it's saved in the file for the correct answer, then it will be marked wrong. So um, another way of kind of sure going around that is um, I'm going to go back to, actually, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back to our dashboard, and I'm going to click on student resources. And it opens it up in a new window. So the integrated three, the student resources, wait a minute, was I in integrated three before two? Oh, I guess, okay. So we're in, um,
We're in Module 3, Lesson 3. And I want to know, did Marie get it? So, practice in problem solving. Um, there are three options here for your assessments. A, B, the best way to remember this is A, B, if you remember that A stands for average. This is um, an assessment for the, for the average achieving student. So um, someone that is just about, you know, this is where uh, most students would be in Math 3. Then you can give that assessment. I'll click on that to show you what it looks like. As far as I've 
interacted with the curriculum. So, uh, Mr. Shabazz, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the pretest is a good way to figure out: Do we need to cover this material, or does this student understand it? Um, because some of what you can do, uh, because your student is usually just one student, you're not dependent on a classroom of 30 and having to manage all of their skill abilities. If your student is really sharp in um, algebraic um, expressions, then have them take the pretest and the post-test. If they're scoring A or above, 90% or above, then they've got the understanding then to move on to the next module without having to do all the lessons. Does that make sense? And you can then present that to your AT and say, this is, they've mastered algebraic expressions because here are the, you know, here are the assessments to show that. So does that make sense? So that's kind of where these would come in handy. So I assume on the teacher edition, all the answers are there. Yeah. Set up the same way. Mm -hmm. And so um, the reason why I wanted to show you the student edition is because I used to print off all the um, all those assessments off of my teacher edition. And what it would do is it would print off the actual work, worksheet and then it would print out the answers. It, and it, it doesn't have the answers on the worksheet, it's a separate just, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go back, um, I'm gonna log out and go back into mine. I don't know if it's gonna remember me. So here we are to my, um, this would be my dashboard. I'm going to go into, um, <coughs> Math integrated three, and just so that we kind of have the same understanding in terms of um, conceptually what we've covered, I'm going to go into teacher resources. We were in unit two, module three. So here are all the things that are available to me. Um, there's even more assessments available at the teacher resource level. So the only ones that were available on the student was the pre and post, right? Let's say you went through the lesson, you're done with all three lessons that chapter three is made up of, and now you wanna give a chapter test, okay? Um, you can do that, let's see. Assessment resources, B. See how it says PDF, that's the file name. TE tells you it's teacher edition. I'm just gonna open this up so you can see what it looks like. So here's our test, or then call it a quiz, call it whatever you want. Um, it's basically testing all of the concepts that are covered in module three. And as you're looking at this, you're probably thinking, oh, two. I'm gonna have to do the work to figure this out. No, usually when you're printing, when you've opened up the teacher edition, then here, this third page is your answers. And so this is where it's kind of, it took, I had to kind of scroll through it a couple times to realize how this was all set up. But um, the way that they wrote this, they tried to consolidate a lot onto a page. So you'll see that here they've got the answers to module quiz two modify. But they also have your answers here for module three, quiz B. Okay? So um, I don't usually print off the answers. I did in the beginning, and then it was like a lot of paper and, you know, a paper that I ended up throwing away. So um, when it comes time, time for me to correct, I just pull up my teacher edition and then grade off the computer. And that's kind of how I do that. Um, there, have, there have been times where if it's, if it's a problem that um, they get wrong, and I only have access to the answers, but I don't have the, here's why the answer is this, then we have to revisit the module of the lesson and kind of see, okay, what, what concept is missing? What piece are they not, have they not gotten that this problem is wrong? And so that's kind of where, as a parent, um, I didn't read every single lesson. I didn't sit there with Marie to go over the lessons, but there were some lessons where she's like, I am so not getting this. Then we would sit together, and as I'm listening to it, then I'm thinking, okay, well, they're covering, you know how you can listen to something and you're realizing, oh, they're actually trying to, you know, teach this particular concept, so then you're able to kind of interact with them with some open-ended questions to get them to the point where you've already come. Does that make sense? 
So that's kind of where the home instruction will be. Um, and so it's very different from what they might get in a class because the class has to cater to 30 versus the freedom that we have to only catering to one. And we also know our students' strengths and weaknesses, where they need support, where they, they can flourish and go on their own and some independence. So, um, I don't know if there's specific questions, but that's kind of how I've navigated through um, the curriculum. And Holly, you did uh, Math Advanced 2 last year, so I don't know if there's things that you found helpful to do or successful for. My husband did it, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> but didn't we talk about like homework sections that like if they answered them on here and they weren't right, like they didn't have the opportunity to fix them. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they were getting really bad homework grades. Yes. And so that's why we did end up going all to just paper printouts and then he could see what Andrew was working out. And, and did you find that that was give him credit for completing yes. his homework versus uh -huh. the whole like, oh, it looks like you did horrible on your homework. Well, and I remember speaking to your husband. I think it was in a basketball room. Probably. But, um, and, and that, was, uh, that was some of the frustration because um, as an instructor, your husband knew that Andrew understood the concept. He just didn't input the answer the way that the computer was recognizing it. And then hours were spent trying to do this thing that truly didn't show um, where the students' achievements were, just the, like a whole lot of frustration. And so you do have to kind of do a little bit of trial and error. When that last section on your lessons that is called evaluate and it has that red bar, um, I would encourage you it, to have your student try it because if it works for your student, there's a whole lot less navigating that you have to do to make sure that your student is actually uh, latching on to the concept of the math curriculum is teaching. So, but um, I, I don't know, I'm old school. I'm 45, so I like pencil and paper. Yeah. Like, and I know there's a part of it that they do need to be able to, advocate, they need to be able to navigate on the computer. This is a skill that's now um, necessary for our students to be able to do and I feel that with the ebook the way that it's designed and the assessments that are embedded in the lesson that it still gives them some opportunity to interact without complete dependence on those evaluate sections at the end so I kind of feel like I'm giving a little bit of both and so um, but that's the beauty of being able to do this at home is um, you know your students best, you know their strengths, you know the areas that they need support, and so you can help kind of grow in those areas and excel and use some of their strengths to help support some of those areas. So, I'm so sorry about, um, I don't know if any of this is making sense, because that's really hard to not be yeah, able to navigate it. So it's certainly not with the sixth graders are doing so. Yeah, in the sixth grade, there's this, um, are they doing, I think, I know my sixth grader is doing Go Math, but he's at a different school, but it's the same publisher, so Mary, I don't know yeah. what the sixth graders are doing, but I, they don't have it, they don't have the, the configuration is different for the sixth graders, so, but, maybe you guys came with specific questions, and I want to be able to answer, if I can, those specific questions. No? Um, I can give you, um, I'm not, I'm not trained in math, in fact I'm trained in social work so it's not, it has no intersection with, with this. Um, I, um, the publisher did a training that um, I was able to attend. And it was, it was helpful to begin to understand the dashboard, but the training was more designed towards the classroom teacher, which makes sense because th there's more of the classroom teachers that need to be trained on. So setting up your roster and how to send assignments and, and that kind of thing. So that part of the website I haven't really used because um, it's a whole lot of actually working and clicking and setting up these folders that is necessary because I only got one student and I don't need 
reports to know, okay, how, generally speaking, how is my classroom of 30 doing and, and that kind of thing. I can tell by just grading the report whether she's getting it or not. So, um, but you can play around with that stuff too. I mean, just because I don't doesn't mean you can't. So, um, and I don't, you know, um, they are going to make this video available on the website, is my understanding. So, um, but you, you're welcome to call me. I can give you my cell and I, I accept texts and that kind of thing. Um, I may not be able to get to you right away, but I can at least, um, if you can give me 24 hours, I can get back to you to either say, um, yeah, I've run across that, and this is what I've done, or I have no idea how to help you, but here's Mary Gonzalez. <laughs> so I can do one of the two things. And um, so I can write my number here. Yes. You're welcome to call. And if you choose to do online assignments for your kiddo, I, I can sit down and show you how to send out digital assignments and create your own, or if you want to use templates. I wouldn't recommend the templates, but if you so like, I'd no problem in that show as well. So if we run into problems with concepts, and they don't get it, and I don't get it, we can come talk to you? Sure, of course. Okay.